Hello, everyone. This is my great pleasure to introduce our work, Curl Central Chart from a Single Wave Function. This is my joint work with Ada Kim, Kotaro Kato, and Victor Albert. In that, this talk, I'm going to tell you an surprising connection between quantum information theory and quantum many-body physics. By defining the quantum, um, the modular commutator JABC for any tripartite quantum system we, and uh, making use of it, we proposed a solution to a long standing puzzle of the um, gap two dimensional many body system concerning the Carroll central charge. So, in this first slide, I would like to tell you the definition of a modular commutator and provide one motivation on why we consider this. Considering the tripartite quantum state rho ABC on a tensor product Hilbert space. So the tensor factors Hilbert space on A, B, and C are assumed to be finite dimensional. So <clears throat> one motivation is the following. So when thinking about a quantum entanglement, and the first thing people think about are probably the von Neumann entropy, which is um, the measure for um, entanglement of a bipartite pure state. And our, there are uh, entanglement measures for bipartite mixed states as well. Those well-known entanglement measures are invariant and uh, the transformation rho to rho star. Here, rho star is um, the complex conjugation operation on the product state basis with respect to this partition. <clears throat> this choice of invariant under this complex conjugation is certainly well motivated. But I would like to argue that breaking this invariant is also quite well motivated. Um, the inspiration comes from chirality, which appears in many branches of science. For example, in this figure, we have a molecule which is, consists uh, of several atoms. So there, there are uh, several parts of this object. Yeah, in this context, it's, um, um, yeah, people can, it makes sense to tell, talk about chirality. And this atom and this mirror image uh, both can exist in, in nature. And um, they are certainly very similar. For example, they have the same mass, the same size. Uh, however, one can be converted to another by rotation, which lead to some uh, distinction in their physical properties. <clears throat> can we talk about chirality for quantum states? In the um, broad sense, it uh, uh, hasn't been defined as far as we can tell. However, this quantity JABC modular commutator does seem to characterize uh, some sort of chirality for quantum tripartite quantum state. Um, why I'm saying this, this is because um, J is odd and rho goes to rho star, which is kind of like the um, reversal of time direction. And J um, flips sign under the switch of A and C, which is kind of an, an abstract version of a space reflection. Furthermore, J is zero if rho ABC is real, which includes all the classical states meaning that the J is not zero, it's a quantum, it's a, a property of the quantum state. <clears throat> okay, now I would like to introduce you to the um, puzzle in the many body quantum state. Uh, yeah, the reason we talk about, uh, the main reason we talk about this quantity J A B C is that it, uh, we, we said something very concrete about it. <clears throat> and. Uh, Currently, there is no operational meaning. We don't know any operational meaning of this quantity, but uh, maybe there is more things to it. There's something to be explored. So the, um, the puzzle of the many body physics side is about two dimensional quantum system with chirality. The main character in this story is the Carroll central chart uh, denoted by C minus. And <clears throat> to introduce the Carroll central chart, let me introduce a phenomena which people can 
a, a physical phenomena which people can make sense of. And consider a two-dimensional gap system. There are exotic such systems that if we put the system on a closed manifold, it can be completely gapped. However, if we put that system on a disk with an edge, there is always a um, gapless mode um, fluid near the boundary. And if we consider a finite temperature low compared to the energy gap, the in equilibrium state, there can be a non-zero non energy current flowing along the boundary. boundary. Um, and it breaks the chirality in the sense that it, the current may just uh, go counterclockwise in, instead of the other way around. There is a universal formula for this energy current. <clears throat> so the energy current I uh, equal to pi over 12 times the curl central charge time temperature T squared. And this phenomenon is a, uh, well, for, for those of you who are, yeah, maybe uh, maybe some of you are more familiar if I mention other names of this carol central charge. It's also known as uh, the coefficient for thermal hall conductance, which is something people uh, try to measure recently, uh, thermal hall conductance. And C uh, minus is also sometimes known under the name of a gravitational anomaly, the coefficient of gravitational anomaly. <clears throat> why why are there are so many names for it? This is because the this is a quite um non-trivial uh, simple phenomena in the sense that the setup of this problem is simple and uh, it's usually non-trivial to have a signature uh, survive in, in a, a equilibrium state in, at, at finite temperature. But uh, yeah, the carol central charge is one such thing. To further support my argument, I would like to mention that there is a folklore in the condensed matter people. Um, in pure 1D system, we can have a non-trivial energy current in equilibrium. That means the two-dimensional bulk is necessary. Then the natural question is, can we extract uh, the carol central charge just from the ground state? Will function within the bulk? When I said within the bulk, I really mean within the bulk. And that's uh, the blue region in the disk, <clears throat> which is uh, uh, large enough and it's um, separated by enough distance from the edge. If we have a reduced density matrix on it, can we ex extract the information of the curl central charge? That's the problem. And if we ask this question, then actually, um, we, we are we dive into a bigger problem. Um, that's the <clears throat> yeah a bigger puzzle. That's for the two dimensional gap, the face of matter with interactions, with local interactions. So um, two things are known to be crucial in this story. Um, those are anions, which are non-trivial excitation within the book, which may not have a boson or fermion statistic. And another is the gap, uh, non-trivial edge physics. <clears throat> By thinking, uh, well, um, those systems can be well, roughly um, classified into three, <clears throat> three non-trivial cases, um, according to whether there are anions in the book and whether there are, there's an um, ungapable edge, robust gapless edge, and then, um, as you can see from those examples I mentioned, uh, all three sets are now empty. <clears throat> um, Carol central charge plays a role in the first two cases. And uh, it, it's well motivated to consider the Carol central charge and the bulk anions together because they are closely related. Well, one beautiful relation is, um, uh, yeah, for example, for um, system made of bosons, the curl central charge mod A is, um, has a beautiful relation to the breathing and fusion properties of the anions. <clears throat> okay, now we, we ask, let's ask the question again in this broader physical context, um, that can we uh, distinguish those three um, cases by 
from the Goku function. Part of the answer is known for quite some time. Um, the idea is that we can calculate something known as topological entanglement entropy in the book, which is um, um, extracted a constant, uh, constant extracted by doing a linear combination of entanglement and entropy of um, the uh, several regions in the book. So gamma uh, equal to the logarithm of the total quantum dimension of the anion, which count how many anions are, are there in, in the book. So if there are anions, gamma is greater than zero. If there is no anion, gamma equal to zero. <clears throat> uh, it is equally well motivated to ask the question for chiral central charge. Uh, that is, uh, can we uh, extract the chiral central charge from the bulk wave function? Uh, and this question has been there for uh, a long time. There are many ideas in trying to uh, solve this question based on different ideas. Uh, this is an incomplete list of uh, different uh, yeah, previous works. Surprisingly, we are able to um, propose a new formula and uh, our derivation is based on a completely different logic. Uh, that's the surprising part. And uh, <clears throat> the, the interesting, the, the key object in our argument is this uh, object called modular commutator. Um, so let's uh, go back to modular commutator. So yeah, this definition as I mentioned, it's for any tripartite tri um, quantum state row ABC. So here is, we have commutator of KAB and KBC, where K is the modular homotonian. Okay, I, I will use this notation K for modular homotonian in the next few slides. <clears throat> okay, our formula um, in terms of the modular commutator reads. So the modular commutator for the ABC partition of a disk within the bulk of the 2D ground state equal to pi over three times the uh, Carroll central charge. <clears throat> uh, other than the general properties, okay, I, I mentioned that we can easily derive some uh, general properties of the uh, modular commutator in the, um, yeah, for general tripartite quantum state. But uh, for the, uh, this particular many body problem, why do we propose this formula? <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm going to give you a physical derivation of this formula in the next few pages, but uh, now, uh, before that, I will, uh, let's check something simpler. Um, so yeah, it, we can check that. This uh, quantity JABC has a right transformation uh, one should expect for the current central charge uh, either under time, time reversal, that's uh, F row to row star, or the uh, space reflection, which uh, switches A and C. Before I go further, uh, it's important to mention our assumptions um, for two dimensional um, intact many body system. Uh, yeah, intacting many body system in two dimensions is very diverse and, and uh, known to be hard hard problem. So, uh, if we want to make progress, we want some reasonable, uh, physically motivated assumptions which can cover uh, a lot of non-trivial cases. So, what assumption can we take? Uh, those are two physical motivated assumptions we shall take in the in the following. One is the entanglement area law. And probably many of you are familiar with this, but um, I would like to say that the, the main thing, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, the uh, important um, uh, important thing is that for for the entanglement area law, um, well, that that's the statement that for large enough systems, for subsystem of length scale much larger than the correlation length. The, we have an entanglement area law, which implies a quantum Markov chain structure. So if we take X, Y, and Z, which form a chain-like structure, the condi conditional mutual information vanishes. 
the consequence of this uh, bandaging of conditional mutual information are um, gives the modular commutator is zero for this partition, and that the uh, modular homotonian, which is the logarithm of the reduced symmetric, can be decomposed into smaller pieces. I would like to mention that this um, um, precise quantum Markov chain structure is an idealization. <clears throat> and um, yeah, um, as physicists, uh, sometimes, um, yeah, we will allow some amount of um, idealization to go further and make a physical derivation. And so after that, we can go further to check whether the, the, the result we derive makes sense or not. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, it's an, an outstanding pro, um, question to make this rigorous in order to do that is, um, I, I think it's a, yeah, necessary to consider approximate quantum Markov chain. I'll mention that in the open question. Um, okay. The second assumption is also, um, it is a universal formula. We can find in physical li literature that's about the energy current at the edge. Um, I already mentioned this, but uh, uh, I would like to emphasize the temperature range. <clears throat> for um, in, in the right temperature range for this this um, formula to apply is that uh, T has to be low uh, compared to the bulk energy gap, but T also has to be high enough from the perspective of the edge. <clears throat> okay, here's the sketch of the derivation. The first thing is that J, B, C is invariant and the smooth deformation of A, B, and C. So it doesn't really matter um, yeah, which disk you choose, how large it is. Um, if area law satisfies, it all takes the same value. This is because uh, yeah, in this case, we have this quantum Markov chain, which, um, yeah, can, yeah, which lead to this equality. Uh, secondly, the modular homotonian is local uh, for the disk-like region. So if we take the minus logarithm of the reduced density matrix of this large disk containing many small hexagons, and each of the hexagons is larger compared to the correlation length, then the, the um, modular homotonian on this large disk, which is uh, uh, some operator supported on extended regions, can be decomposed into smaller operators. And then we can show that, uh, show explicitly that <clears throat> on the right hand side, we only have one side term, two side term, and three side terms. Uh, yeah, this also uh, comes from the quantum Markov chain property. Both are important for the next page. So the locality of the modular homotonian tells us that. Oh, okay, we have some, some local uh, analog of local homotonian. So we can define um, the analog can go further. So we can define the uh, analog of the energy current for this modular homotonian, which we call as the modular current. <clears throat> yeah, that's a, a current from some, some hexagon to, uh, to another hexagon. Um, we can do the calculation explicitly using the um, decomposition and using the topological invariant. The calculation shows that the modular current is zero for any size within the bulk. And also non-trivial contribution come from um, sets along the boundary, near the boundary. <clears throat> yeah, this is what we, a summary of what we got. If we sum up, um, do a sum of the contribution you get the analog of the edge energy current, which is uh, this answer as a sketch. Uh, here's the calculation that <clears throat> uh, how, how we find the modular current from A to Y. Okay. Um, so the final step of the argument involve, uh, involves the, the temperature. The, so the first observation is that the reduced symmetry on the disk D um, is the exponential of the modular commutator, and uh, since it's low cost, um, that this um, effectively this ground state on reduced to this disk in the bulk uh, is thermal, 
uh, is, is thermal with respect to a local local modular homotonium. The effective temperature here is t equal to one. Uh, then we can ask whether it's okay to apply this formula. Um, the following the following is an argument instead of a proof. But uh, what we want to check is whether the temperature makes sense, whether it looks like the right temperature for the application of this formula. So uh, what we can check is that the temperature is low uh, from the perspective of the bulk. This is because the density matrix rho sub d is a ground state. So it has an area law within the bulk, the interior of the disk. <clears throat> On the other hand, the temperature is high from the perspective of the edge. Why is it? Because if we take two hexagons separated by some distance of the boundary, and the mutual information vanishes, which is, uh, indicates that the thermal correlation length uh, of the boundary is smaller than the circumference of the boundary. <clears throat> and by plugging, plugging in t equal to one into this formula, we arrive at our proposed formula. Yeah, that's the sketch of the derivation. <clears throat> Having derived a formula using some uh, somewhat idealized assumption on the universal formula of the edge energy current, we would like to test our uh, formula numerically. <clears throat> a a non-trivial point to mention here is that um, for chiral state, um, if the oh, sorry, if the uh, state has curl central charge equal to zero, there are many solvable models we can check uh, this formula, and the uh, the formula can hold precisely, and the quantum Markov chain conditions the area law we assume hold precisely as well. But for a system with non-zero curl central charge, um, there's belief that that there's no zero correlation links model, so we. We don't have precise area law and don't have precise quantum Markov chain structure. And indeed, we can find st um, a lattice model with um, precise area law. <clears throat> so in this slide, well, what we, we uh, considered was a lattice model, spin model, um, with curl edge and a, a non-trivial anion type called simium. So it's an intacting system with not, um, approximate quantum Markov chain in its ground states. Well, what do we calculate? Uh, how do we do the numerical calculation? We put the system on a sphere and cut the, uh, divide the sphere into A, B, C, and D. Uh, then we can calculate the modular commutator for this partition and increasing the number of sides. So we can, uh, while we, we are mainly interested in the modular commutator, we also calculated the topological entanglement entropy since it's used the same partition. <clears throat> the theoretical prediction is listed, uh, can be found in this box. Um, yeah, so um, for doing numeric, we use the, a trick, uh, trick to increase the data set. That's why we borrow the design of the PANCOM, which uses the golden angle. So um, for any n not too small, if we use this uh, good angle design, we get some real, um, fairly uniform distribution of point on the sphere. And uh, so this is uh, the plot for the data. If we do the extrapolation for JABC modular commutator, it gives uh, about 0.7% error with our theoretical prediction at n go to infinity. And this result is within, yeah, more importantly, it's within the standard deviation of our result. <clears throat> so this looks consistent so far. And so let me briefly summarize and mention some open problems. And in the context of a, a gapped many body system and curl central charge, um, we derived a new formula for the chiral central charge uh, based on two assumptions. One is on the entanglement area law, 
<clears throat> and another is on the edge physics. Um, well, um, although our assumption is kind of idealized by assuming precise quantum Mark Markov chain, the numerical test does suggest the formula holds beyond that, um, uh, yeah, that uh, idealization. Uh, if you take our results, then a, a corollary would be Carroll ground state has an intrinsic same problem. Yeah, that's a byproduct. Um, yeah, if we want to make our, uh, yeah, so uh, this success in at least some some system, uh, the fact that some, some more realistic system, um, yeah, our formula holds for some uh, more realistic setup suggests um, this modular commutator and our argument might deserve uh, some more detailed analysis and uh, an important uh, outstanding open problem in that direction would be to understand approximate quantum Markov chain. Okay, if the conditional mutual information is there about um, approximately equal to zero with the behavior of the modular commutator, uh, it must be small, but uh, how small it is, that's the open problem stated in this box. And furthermore, how does JBC changes under local circuit? Um, okay, in this last slide, I would like to <clears throat> try to uh, relate our study to uh, what maybe everyone started in a um, broad context. So the modular commutator seem to characterize some different sort of uh, uh, different property of multi-partite entanglement. Um, please allow me to loosely call it as a chirality. So then the question is, are there other forms of chirality in quantum states? Um, I, I can't see for sure, but uh, um, there, there, indeed there are different types of chiralities in other research um, and science um, subjects like uh, biology, chemistry, and physics. And the uh, chirality exists both in nature and in man-made objects. <clears throat> and so, uh, the modular commutator can detect the chirality for some of the quantum state. Is it the only chirality indicator, or are there, there are different types of things, uh, other indicator for to detect chirality for other uh, quantum systems? Uh, right. <clears throat> so there are, uh, of course non chiral quantum states are already very diverse and interesting. There are, there are so many examples for that, and uh, they are known to be useful to do uh, yeah, many different tasks for quantum information theory. <clears throat> Since there are also chiral quantum states, I would like to ask uh, if there, there is um, any advantage for, uh, for using chiral states to, to do anything. And um, yeah, certainly don't don't have a clue of the answer, and and maybe there are, there are maybe the most interesting question has hasn't been asked yet, so it's fun to ask more questions. That's all I want to say. Thanks. <clears throat>